Hey guys, welcome back to Mike Reacts. Now, obviously you guys know that I'm very big into my military history and the US military in general. So today we're watching an interview with a SEAL Team 6 operator um, as he remembers Operation Red Wings. For those of you who don't know, or maybe haven't uh, have forgotten, Operation Red Wings um, was the operation in Afghanistan that was primarily, uh, was primarily for intelligence purposes. Um, and it is depicted in, uh, so essentially what happened is a SEAL Team of four men were uh, ambushed on a hill because they were caught, they were caught by a, um, a goat herder. And this is very famously portrayed in Lone Survivor where um, Mark, Mark Wahlberg portrays uh, Marcus Luttrell. Um, Marcus, Marcus Luttrell being the Lone Survivor of the operation. And it's a very, very, um, a very, very daunting um, uh, movie to watch. It's a very, very um, horrific thing, what, uh, th thing that happened because not only did the three men of the team, um, unfortunately, um, they were unfortunately killed in action on the mountain side of the mountain, but also, uh, I believe, a Chinook helicopter carrying more seal uh, seals and uh, rangers was unfortunately taken down by RPG fire during the operation uh, in their bid to rescue the um, rescue the four men the four seals from the hillside. So let's see, um, this is a SEAL Team 6 operator remembering Red Wings, he was there, I presume, and this is an interview with him. So let's see what he's got uh, to say. I'm very interested to hear this one. For those of you who are new to this channel, thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and a comment of what you would like to see uh, in the future. And if you feel like you don't want to miss any more of these videos, once you subscribe, don't forget to hit the, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get notified of every brand new video. You can also check out my new channel, uh, Mikey's American Dream. I am moving to Texas, Houston, Texas, that is, uh, in February. So I am documenting through video um, basically every step of the process of moving to the UK to the US and eventually becoming an American after citizenship, uh, after I'm eligible for citizenship after five or so years. So let's get to this video. You can also check me out on Patreon, by the way, the link is down below in the description. It's only $5 per month and you get lots and lots of exclusive video footage. So let's get to this video. Speaking of Red Wing, let's kind of start there, you know? Yeah. I know that I know that was your sister platoon out there. Yeah, as our task unit. So let's kind of talk about, you know, where were you? You know, it's kind of interesting how you found out, and, and I'd like to just kind of start right there. Sure. I'll go back. Um, you know, we were tra training up for two years on workup, and close to deployment, I don't know if it was a month or two months out, and again, you know, my recollection of a lot of things, you know, 13 years in the teams, they all went into one year, you yeah. know. I, so so bear with me if I, if I get some of these facts wrong, but it was a month or two before deployment, one platoon was going to deploy directly to Afghanistan and the other platoon was going to Germany and then after three months we were going to switch. So the platoon that went to Germany goes to Afghanistan, the platoon that is in Afghanistan goes to Germany. Well, of course, we wanted to go to war first and it was very busy at the time, it was 2005, um, there was a lot going on and why we wanted to go first was because if we got to go to Afghanistan first and fight, then we got to go back to Germany and just drink and fuck off for three months, right? Like that was the yeah. idea and that would have been great. The platoon that goes to Germany knew that we had to prepare to go to Afghanistan because we couldn't get like drunk and fat and not <laughs> train and then end up in the middle of a war zone, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, so that. it was kind of like, it sucked, you know, if you were that, Platoon. So we fl we flip a coin, and we lost. So our platoon lost, and we went to Germany. And you know the other platoon went to Afghanistan. You know, and the rest is kind of history there. Um, you know, all for a simple coin toss. So I you know I get I get some goosebumps yeah. thinking about it. That you know who knows, you know who knows what would have happened. I don't know how many people know about that coin toss um also oh, perhaps he wasn't uh in afghanistan during operation red wings it seems to me is what they're saying is the platoon that lost the coin toss went to afghanistan no the platoon the platoon that won the coin toss went to afghanistan first and i'm assuming um marcus the trail and um the others uh, who perished on the side of that mountain in uh fighting for their country 
uh, were members of, of that platoon. Um, yeah. They went to Afghanistan, we went to Germany. They had no shit, was a, it was literally a coin toss. The fucking coin toss. flipped a coin. Yeah. Wow. Cooked it, flipped the coin in the team room. Damn. Yeah. Heads I win, tells you lose, right? Yeah. So we went to Germany, trained, I drank. Um, got to see the Tour de France. That was cool. Um, but Raid Wings, so, you know, middle of the night, I don't know how it happened. I think it was either I got a phone call or we found out a helicopter got, you know, went down. And, um, you know, you kind of wake up and start knocking on other guys' do doors. You know, we're in, we're, in, we're in our barracks in Germany and nobody really knows what's going on. And, you know, guys start panicking a little bit. We can't get a hold of anybody. We don't know who's in the helicopter. We, we don't know anything. As the night, we stayed up all night. As the night went on, we couldn't get any intel. Like, here we are, we're, we're a SEAL platoon in Germany. It's our sister platoon that we just worked up with for two years. All our best friends are there. We have no idea what's going on. You're only thinking the worst, of course. Um, you know, you think with some modern technology, we at least know what's going on. We start getting intel back from Virginia Beach from our freaking wives that are telling us, Hey, so and so just had a car pull up with, you know, seals in uniform to tell, you know, to tell the spouse that their husband got killed. And so we'd find out. Jesus. My God. You know, Jeff Taylor or, you know, Jacques Fontaine or, you know, Eric Christensen. I'm like, holy fuck, holy fuck, you know? Um, but again, we're finding this stuff back from our women in Virginia Beach. Like, just the whole system at the time was, was screwed up. Yeah. And to no fault of anyone's. I mean, I mean, everybody we worked with, I mean, I, I always looked up to, you know, there's, there's always a few bad apples, but I think the majority team guys are there for the right reasons, and they they made the right calls when, when, when the time is right. And we just never lost that many people at one time, right? This was like, this was just new for the community since probably, you know, Vietnam mm. era SEALs. And so I think there was a, you know, it was just a bit of panic, a bit of lessons learned, um, and all types of shit. So, so we went through that night and the next day of trying to figure out, you know, who's alive, who's dead, you know, what else happened? Um, you know, I'm a little foggy on if we found, if, uh, if we knew that, that, you know, Marcus was alive, was anybody else alive? Um, so we, we still didn't really know really what was going on and it took like a week to figure out how fast did your, how fast did you guys start getting intel from your wives? Within a couple hours. That fast? Within a couple hours because I think if, you know, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, it definitely was the next day because like I said, this was nighttime. Yeah. Definitely was the next day. Um, and, you know, we didn't know what to do. Like, all we wanted to do was go over there and fight. We're like, we want to get on a plane now mm. and go. Like, that, like, that's what we want to do. Like, we need to go support them. Like, we need to, like, let's, let's go. Like, we, we stayed for a little while, so we wound up staying a few days. And we wound up just drinking really hard, you know, super drunk, telling stories. Um, you know, we were just, we didn't know what to do. We didn't know how to react. Some guys in the platoon were so... Um, you know, they were so, I don't want to say dumbfounded, but like affected that they were just, you know, depressed and didn't talk. And, you know, it was just, it was just confusing for everybody. Like we never had loss before. Yeah. You know, we never had loss before. And it was, it was actually the first time where I thought like, we're not Superman. Yeah. Like we're really not. And I thought I was, I really thought yeah. I was at that time. I thought there's this, um, I wasn't, um, expecting listening to you the story to be so so clear from an emotional standpoint um it's quite a lot going on there emotionally isn't there wow no way i can get hurt there's no chance like i'm you know i'm i'm built of body armor hmm. yeah. and uh it was <laughs> the first time i got a little like i won't say scared but a little anxious. Is that real? This is real. This is exactly it. 
Sean, you, you said it. It's the first time it got real. And, uh, and that's cool. That's it. I mean, we signed up for that. It was, it was no problem. Um, so you wind up... Um, that's the incredible mentality that sets a lot of military guys aside from everyone else. We signed up for that. It is what it is. We accept it. Same time, I think losing your buddies is, is even scarier than the threat of you losing your own life because those are your friends, you know? It's a very weird dynamic. Not weird, sorry. It's a very understandable dynamic. Um, but many, it's a dynamic that many won't understand, I don't think. I think the timeline... I think Marcus, they flew Marcus in, you know, just kind of fast forwarding from all the, like the, you know, the gritty details was, you know, we obviously found out that the, you know, the rec element, you know, sniper element, reconnaissance element got compromised and, you know, three didn't make it out. Uh, Mike Murphy being one of them, yeah. who was my, one of my buds classmates, wow. you know, good friend. Um, but Marcus made it out or, you know, eventually, you know, got rescued and then they flew him into Germany to like debrief and like repatriate and you know it was like a whole process they go through and they said hey like he needs to see some seals like he needs some he needs some team guys like right yeah. now he's you know like yeah so um I volunteered LPO volunteered and one other person we, we went up to Ramstein and you know met with him um, he was with the psychologist at the time and um, yeah, it was just good to like you see him, you know, after that whole week of, you know, and I'm sure for him it was probably very, um, it was probably just like, I don't know, humbling is not the word, but uh, it was just good for a soul, I think, mm -hmm. to see some, some fresh faces, some team guys that he knew um, after that happened, because yeah. I think, you know, he obviously went through everything he went through. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we just we shot the shit with him for a couple hours. Um, I mean, he was like wounded head to toe. Um, I joke with him now. I was like, "Dude, you look like shit. <laughs> like you had, you know, like dried blood and cuts and just like his whole, you know, his arms and legs and face and neck and you know his legs were really bad. Um, but it was good to just you know talk to him. Yeah. And I don't remember much of the conversation, but I do remember sitting outside on the. We were sitting on a um, like a wooden table, you know, and and again, like I didn't know how to I didn't know how to react. I didn't know yeah. what to say. You know, what do, what do I say to this guy who literally just been through hell, hell and back? I, I think people don't actually appreciate that. It, that it can't really get closer to genuine hell than than that, aside from hell itself. I mean, falling off the side of the mountain, being shot, cut, watching your closest friends die. Um, not having enough water, food, being chased by the enemy in mountains that you don't know. It's, it's can't, yeah, damn. Um, just lost all his best friends. And <sighs> yeah, I, w w what can I do? What can I say to, to help him right now? You know, I feel, I felt so bad for him. Um, you know, I just, I just didn't know what to do. So I was just there to be a, you know, a, a a friend, a, 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 an ear that he can talk to and, you know, try my best to figure out what am I supposed to do in this situation because I've never been here before. Yeah. You know, I never lost any friends and I never, um, I never seen what hurt was like and, you know, I could tell that, you know, he was hurt and, you know, I know he won't get upset about me talking about this, you know, because this is real, right? This is what happened and, um, you know, I hope, I hope he's good now, you know, and so I pray for him. Yeah. But, um, so we, we did, we did that, um, you know, we hung out. And you forget, uh, we're forgetting combat to that, of that intensity hasn't really been seen by many troops since the end of the Vietnam War. I mean, Afghanistan was a relatively calm war compared to that of Vietnam, um, Second World War, Korea, etc. But that is not to diminish how bad it was because it was Afghanistan. Um, although there was not mass fighting as as you would have seen, for example, in Vietnam on a day-to-day -day basis, contact on a day-to-day -day basis from all ground forces. Those who experienced 
uh, combat on the ground in, in Afghanistan will of course testify to just how bad it was um, because combat is combat no matter who your enemy is um, and you know those were the early stages of the Afghan war you know and it was probably um, not necessarily calm until then but you know fighting an insurgency is far far different from fighting conventional ground force and probably that level of force that level of strength uh, shown um, uh, it hasn't been shown before if he was going back to the states if I, if I get sorry I've been mean that from the from the Taliban perspective um, probably that, uh, as far as I understand there was uh, more than a hundred fighters uh, against these four men on that mountainside um, which isn't something you see commonly from an insurgency, you know? My mind, my, my memory serves me correctly. We went back uh, to Stuttgart and got our gear ready and deployed. And uh, we had a, you know, we had to fill half a platoon because yeah. they just lost half a platoon. And uh, we got there and I remember it was the middle of the night and you know, my other, my, one of my best friends in the teams, um, Matty Roberts, he, uh, who, we, we got to the camp, we got off the, you know, we got off the flight, got on the ground, humvee over to the compound. I remember walking in and again, you know, I'm getting chills talking about it. Like, again, I didn't know how to react. You know, here's a platoon that was there on the other helicopter and watching like their buddies, you know, burn into the ground. And I was going to go see my best friend. And, and I remember seeing him in, in his room. And, uh, you know, we just, we just embraced. And, uh, you know, again, um, I just, I just didn't know how to react. You know, I just felt like I had to be there for my brothers. You know, I had to be there for my buddies. Um, and whatever it took to, you know, whatever it took to get through that situation, like I was prepared to do that. I was prepared to, to lend a hand and help. And, you know, I was ready to fight. Right. And then that's all that mattered. And so it was good. It was good to see him, you know, kind of embrace high five, you know, all right, what are we doing here now? And, uh, you know, and then, you know, you know then, then we got to work. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan. Wow. Very, um, very deep, that. Uh, extremely deep, actually. Um, you can only imagine what they went through. And I can see from his perspective, too, that, uh, I won't say necessarily his father's guilt, but it could have been him. It could have been him, right? That's the idea. The idea is that it could have been him because it was a coin toss, you know. Like, literally, was literally a coin toss so how can you compartmentalize it how can you rationalize what happened there i don't know i'm assuming that's probably something that they all still struggle with today i can imagine uh, marcus the trail of course also struggling with comp uh, with rationalizing what happened on that day and the events that preceded it um it's very very important not to forget that these people are human beings they may be navy seals they may be some of the toughest baddest mother fuckers out there right but they're still human. They still have emotions like all of us. Just because they're strong and tough and they go to war does not mean they don't feel what we feel. Um, it does mean that they are probably a different breed to a lot of people. <laughs> but um, they are still human beings at the end of the day who have basically signed the dotted line and agreed to uh, participate in an act that may possibly end with the, possibly end with them giving their lives to their country. And that's something that we should not look over. We should not um, let go over our heads because it's an extremely... Uh, it's a decision that you s many can't take back, um, and many probably wouldn't if they had the chance, uh, the choice, uh, because you know it means a lot to them. So, yeah, that was absolutely incredible. It was an cre incredible insight and perspective into what happened um, of an operation Red Wings. I love watching things like that from guys who were around the teams, who were in the teams, and um, who had a have a fresh perspective and outlook on what happened. I think it's very, very important that we all listen to and watch things like that to really understand what our troops over in the Middle East went through and especially not just in the Middle East but um, anyone who you can talk to who you can get information from from Vietnam, Korea, Second World War it's so insightful and it really does it can translate into our lives so to understand what people go through and how 
fortunate we are not to have to go through that. Um, but I really enjoyed that, guys. Um, quite a somber, um, quite quite a somber video. So I, I'm sure you guys can go through my catalog of videos and find something a bit more uplifting. But that was absolutely great, uh, very insightful, very good work from the interviewer, who really just let him talk and um, really just only interjected in small amounts here and there and asked questions more than anything. Really, really great interview. If you guys enjoy this kind of content, let me know. I'll be happy to do far, far, far more of it because it's really, really great stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like to this video. Let me know down below that, that you did like it or that you didn't like it or what you recommend I should do next. And most of all, subscribe to this channel because every subscription helps this tiny, tiny channel grow to be a little bit bigger and uh, the bigger it is, the better content I can produce. I might be able to buy a better camera or um, start doing different kinds and different types of videos. So let me know guys, let me know what you wanna see. Subscribe to the channel, possibly head over to Patreon. The link is down below in the description. It's only $5 per month and you can talk to me person to person through private messenger, which is something that we can't really do here on YouTube. And I hope to see you very, very soon. Also on my other channel, Mikey's American Dream. Have a great day guys and I'll see you on the next video.